Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Peter Monteleone. I'm an interventional cardiologist at the University of Texas at Austin Dell School of Medicine. And today I'll be discussing distal embolization and lower extremity revascularization procedures. These are my disclosures. Distal embolization is of course a feared, dreaded complication of lower extremity endovascular interventions. The VSGNE uh, network uh, described all um, lower extremity interventions between 2010 and 2014 and reported an incidence of distal embolization of 17.3 events per 1,000 procedures, roughly 1.7%. Critical limb ischemia, emergency interventions, an increased number of arteries treated, and performance of atherectomy were all associated with increased frequency of distal embolization events. I'm going to stress three points. A key is elevated index of suspicion for high risk disease, and we're also going to discuss devices and techniques aimed at prevention as well as aimed at treatment of uh, distal embolization. It is absolutely key to maintain an elevated index of suspicion for where acute limb ischemia cases and the risk they pose, uh, if there's a potential thrombosis at sites of prior treatment, if there's concern for embolization as the etiology of occlusion, so patients with atrial fibrillation or ventricular thrombus that may have embolized, but where of hypercoagulable patients, whether that's heparin-induced thrombocytopenia with thrombosis, antiphospholipid antibody, perhaps COVID-19 patients with increased risk of uh, thrombotic events. Also, very key, but where the wire that crosses too easily. None of us are that good. If there is a CTO and a simple soft wire crosses, it's likely because thrombus is causing the occlusion, and that thrombus is at risk for distal embolism. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, preventative measures are extremely important, especially in the situation of distal embolization, which when it occurs can spread very quickly and, and severely, much like a wildfire. Uh, devices are mainly aimed around embolic protection devices. Uh, there were many in the field years Go. Most commonly, currently, we think of two in particular, the EmboShield NAV6 by Abbott, in which the filter is deployed on the bare wire. Um, this allows for free wire movement without moving the filter. Then the Spider and Pollock protection device by Medtronic is a braided uh, mounted device on an 014 wire. Comes between 3 and 7 millimeters and can be delivered over any 014 018 wire or a microcatheter. Embolization happens, and when embolization happens from something that is not clot, there are no good ways to get it out. You can see spider EPDs that are full of uh, embolized plaque, heavy dense calcium in the midst of atherectomy on the right. Indeed, if you watch the video that's occurring on the left side of the screen in which a spider was withdrawn into a guide and became entrapped in the guide, the whole guide was removed, the, uh, the material inside of that spider simply cannot be lysed. It cannot be aspirated. There would be no real good way to get it out besides snaring or surgery. But if you have the ability to capture it in a filter, you can prevent a truly catastrophic event through utilization of a filter to, to capture and catch that just bulky, remarkable, frightening material. Devices aimed at treatment. So if thrombus is the situation, you can use devices for removal or breaking up thrombus. Angiojet rheolytic thrombectomy allows for infusion of TPA and then breaking up clot and aspiration. Penumbra allows for continuous mechanical aspiration. There are aspiration catheters, export pronto, or as the newer image shows, a spire that allows for removal via aspiration of clot. You can also use catheter-directed thrombolysis, including ultrasound-assisted with ECOS, for breaking up clot distal. And now to a, a case, a 58-year-old female with history of peripheral artery disease, status post bilateral common iliac artery stenting done elsewhere three years prior to presentation, done at that time for claudication, and now with a new diagnosis of ovarian cancer um, after chemo and surgery in a hypercoagulable state. Her symptoms had resolved after her stenting, but she had re severe recurrence of claudication over the last few months, worse than ever before. No rest pain or ulcerations. Non-invasive testing demonstrated a moderately diminished left-sided ABI. Her duplex showed spectral Doppler waveforms consistent with upstream uh, disease. Because of suspicion of thrombus in this patient with previous intervention in a hypercoagulable state and sudden symptoms, a CTA was performed, which confirmed a left common iliac artery stent occlusion. 
knowing thrombosis and distal embolization was a risk. We talked about options, including an arteriotomy and thrombus evacuation. The patient was not interested in upfront surgical evaluation, and so we had a multidisciplinary uh, discussion with vascular surgery and decision to proceed to endovascular attack backup. In the lab, right common femoral arterial axis demonstrated patent right-sided common iliac stent and an occluded left-sided stent via the omniclush aortogram. The uh, complete occlusion was within the stent and then patent distal to the stent. Left common femoral artery axis was obtained. The woolly wire, quote unquote, flew. And we are not that good. So that wire went through soft clot. Um, very clearly clot, very clear lit risk for, for distal embolization with therapy. As a result, IVUS was performed, which demonstrated no issues with the stent, good apposition, good expansion, um, no evidence of stent fracture on fluoroscopy. And so initially, AngioJet pulse spray with infusion of 15 milligrams of TPA in a 20-minute dwell was performed. Rheolytic thrombectomy was then performed with multiple passes in order to attempt to remove angiography after demonstrated no difference. No clot was broken up, no clot was removed. Penumbra, CAT6 mechanical aspiration was then attempted with minimal thrombus removal and no change to angiography. Discussion with vascular surgery, because knowing that if clot could not be removed, as soon as we proceed to balloon angioplasty, risk of distal embolization would skyrocket. The decision was to perform undersized angioplasty to find, to attempt to identify a true lumen path and then potentially cover residual clot with a covered balloon expandable stent. That was performed. Immediate excellent result in the common iliac artery and unfortunately complete distal embolization now occlusive in the external Via the left common femoral artery, an angiogram was performed, and then angiojet was performed via the left common femoral artery for attempted removal of that embolized thrombus. The patient immediately developed pain in the left leg. Angiography demonstrated occlusive thrombus, which had now traveled distal to the retrograde sheath in the common femoral artery. Vascular surgery was very temporarily unavailable at this point, and the patient was experiencing acute pain from an acutely ischemic leg. We did what we had to do, put a glide wire through the omni flush from the right side, up and over the iliac bifurcation, past the left common femoral artery sheath, ensured we were in the SFA, placed a spider in the SFA. Uh, these are our wires, one going up from the common femoral, one going past the sheath of superficial femoral artery. We then performed angiojet, attempting rheolytic thrombectomy into the common femoral to remove some embolism. Material. Immediately the pain resolved, but there was still a large burden of thrombus, particularly at the level of the superficial femoral artery. We could see at least part of the profunda again at this point. Discussion with vascular surgery now available, and a Viabon stent was placed to attempt to cover what was left of the thrombus within the superficial femoral artery. This had a nice result within the proximal superficial femoral artery, but a very clear defect, likely from secondary residual thrombus proximally, also likely a thrombotic occlusion of a branch of the profunda. Very nice distal runoff, however. Uh, there was evidence of large burden of clot within the spider, and then removed. As the spider was removed, again, flow became much worse yet again. Evidence of further thrombus now lodged again at the common femoral. Again, the profunda was absent, and things had just become severely, severely worse. At this time, the decision was made to proceed to the OR. Into the OR, exploration of the common femoral was performed with removal of very organized thrombus from the common femoral as well as the origin of the profunda. Vein patch angioplasty was performed, embolectomy of the profunda was performed, removal of the left SFA viabon was performed, and angiography demonstrated now wide patency of the common iliac artery, the common femoral, the profunda, an excellent result. Special thanks to Dr. Scott Seidel for vascular surgery for true bailout case and situation. In conclusion, um, an elevated index of suspicion for high-risk disease for distal embolization is required. Know and be familiar with your techniques because you will need them at absolutely extreme severe times. And know also that regardless of expertise, life and limb threatening challenges can occur as a result of distal embolization. Thank you all very much for your time.